hey, hey, it's T, and welcome to Seen It with my best friend, Keith. We official this week because he did the countdown. Last week, he was like, we here, start. And that's how that's how we begin. <laughs> this, week, this week, he was like, I'll grace you guys with a countdown. <laughs> so so we back at it. And uh, we're going to start with, uh, we're going to review Wonder Woman today. And uh, Wonder Woman 1984. Wonder Woman 1984. Oh, yeah, you're right. Because if we was reviewing Wonder Woman, we would be having a different conversation right now. If we was reviewing Wonder Woman, uh, we would be having having a different conversation right now. Uh, Keith, uh, do you you by chance have the, um, the director and stuff pulled up? I'm pulling it up as we speak, Mr. T. I can give you the synopsis. Via Wikipedia, that's the closest thing I've found thus far. Yes, yes. Uh, Wonder Woman 1984, Mm -hmm. stylized as WW84, is a 2020 American superhero film based on the DC Comics character Wonder Woman. It is the sequel to 2017's Wonder Woman and the ninth installment in the DC Extended Universe. The film is directed by Patty Jenkins from a script she wrote with Geoff Johns and David Callahan. Excuse me. Based on a story by Johns and Jenkins, Gal Gadot, excuse me, stars as Diana Prince, Wonder Woman, alongside Chris Pine, Kristen Wiig, Pedro Pascal, Robin Wright, and Connie Nielsen. Set in 1984 during the the Cold War, the film follows Diana and her past love, Steve Trevor, as they face off against Max Lord and Cheetah. Right. Woo. All right, guys. So I want to first start off by saying the first Wonder Woman. I loved that movie. I um, It's one of the few DC EU movies, uh, DC Universe movies that I actually like. That I can actually tolerate. Uh, uh, You're not alone in that. A lot of people yeah. raved about the how good the first Wonder Woman was. Yes, and Absolutely. then and then um, I loved it even more. The fact that um, that the director, I feel like with these movies, you should get somebody that that can relate to the character a little bit more. So I, I love the fact that the, the director was a woman, just like I love like Black Panther's director was a black. A black guy. I love that you get somebody that can actually like not not just have you know not to just have somebody straight white wash everything with a white man directing everything. So I love the fact that we have a woman director, and I love the first one so much that I went into this movie really wanting to like it. And mind you, I hadn't heard anything about it because I watched it on Christmas Day. Um, I waited to watch it with my family. And I'm gonna start by saying I wasn't really feeling it, uh, and I thought it was just me. I thought it was just me. I was like, man, I'm not feeling this movie. I'm I must be like, you know, I must. It just must be me. And then I get and then I get on Facebook and I realized I was not alone. Uh, but we're not here to talk about everybody else's opinion. We're here to uh, give our, you know, critiques as film lovers. And first and foremost, I want to say um, the villains. Uh, Max, the that guy, I I didn't understand. Like I I mean like I get he was a bad guy, but I was still tr- I was still sitting there wa- like you know like sometimes if you get like the Joker you're just like oh Joker's just insane right or you get Killmonger you get his motives. This guy I was still the whole movie like, but. Why? It was like somebody hurt your feelings and then you just go insane and over the top and it's just like, bruh, it was like the whole time, the whole time I just kept thinking, it's not, it's not that serious, bro. And yeah, it's like it was like he he went from zero to insane real quick and then back. Well, I don't want to give nothing away, but yeah, I didn't understand his motives. I, I wasn't really truly compelled by him as a villain. Um, I don't even feel like the acting was as good in this one as it was in the other one. Like uh uh Gail Gadot, not to say she's like Gal Gadot. The, Gal Gadot, yeah. <laughs> uh I don't know if that's right, but uh It's right, Gal Gadot. 
<laughs> Gal Gadot. So I will say in the last movie, not to say she's just like amazing, but she had like a charm about her or something like, you know, like the scenes where she was supposed to be funny. I, you know, I, I quirked the smile a little bit. You know, it was pretty straightforward movie for me. But this one, I feel like not to say she was awful, but it was just like, I don't know. Nothing was really like. Not from her, not from anybody was really compelling me. There's only like one scene that I kind of even felt and I don't want to give it away, but I'm in my mind, I call it the Michael Bay scene. I don't know uh, if you know what I mean, Keith, but it's a scene where the camera does the Michael Bay thing where like, it, it, you know how Michael Bay always has like a scene in his movies where the camera goes Oh, the rap, there's a rap around. Yeah. And so there was the only scene that I kind of felt were like, oh, she's acting was but I think it was the camera work because I was like, oh, that was kind of clean how they did that. So, yeah, uh, wasn't really compelled by the villain. Um, I did like the action scenes. I did like uh, um, as Cheetah was like ramping up to become Cheetah. Uh, I like the like that first fight when it was like the bank or whatever. I like that. I like the fights between them. I like the the tank chase. I like I like how the action scenes were set up. Um, I feel like this movie had so many moments of I love movies where we get to see our heroes be a hero but then also I was sitting there thinking like man how many little kids are going to be in danger in this movie like I love to see our heroes save kids but sometimes I was just like don't them kids see what's going on why they not move it like (laughs) (laughs) like some of it was like like dang you ain't got to use your superpowers for this one they should just like be observant like yeah so, uh, but that's just a little miniature nit- nitpick. But uh, I was so out of touch with the movie, if I'm being honest, that there was a part of the movie I'm big on. Like when I'm watching a movie, I'm watching a movie. I try not to talk, um, you know, unless it's just like some fun. Like let's just like depending on the situation, if we're like watching a movie and we're riffing on it, we're having fun. That's a different thing. But if I'm watching a movie, watch a movie. My dad's the same way. Watch the movie with my family. My dad gets a call. Answers the call. He's like, "Yeah, well, I'm not doing nothing. We watching a movie. It's kind of slow. Yeah, uh huh, uh huh." And I was just, and I didn't even get bothered by him answering the phone. My little sister was on Instagram, sitting next to me with the volume up, and I still was like, "Yeah, I'm not bothered by that." And normally mm-hmm. that's like a like a pet peeve of mine, but uh, two uh, two and a half hours, I felt like was too long. Um, uh, I. F- I will say that um, I don't want to give it away, but I will say in a, in a way, I kind of like how she resolved the issue with the villain, the main guy, even though I didn't like, I didn't like him as a villain. Uh, I like that. Uh, everything. It wasn't just punch, 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 punch through everything, you know? So I kind of like how she kind of resolved the issue with the villain in the end. And, you know, so that's, I'll say that. But overall, I'm I'm probably giving the, um, it was a piece of art in a museum. Hmm? Uh, but overall, I'll probably give the movie, I feel like I'm being generous, but I'll give it a six out of 10. But if we're doing the f- up to five rating, which I think we have been doing, I'll give it like a 2.5. But Keith, what did you think of the movie? You gave it a 2.5. Yeah, I feel like because because oh, so everybody when I got online, everybody was saying how horrible it was. And I was like, I've seen worse DC movies. So I don't think it was as horrible as what some people were saying. But at the same time, so I didn't you basing think- it off of how bad DC movies are or movies in particular. Because DC is, is notorious for not right. doing good films. Yeah, they are notorious. But I'm doing it on movies in general. I've seen worse films. I, like I said, I like how they resolve the issue. I like the I like the action scenes. Uh, I really liked uh, that's it. That was, <laughs> the action scenes and how they and now and then now she resolved the issue in the end. And even that and that. That yeah, it was, it was a couple of moments where I was like, okay, that was done well. But overall, it wasn't the best movie. Like, would I be like, hey, like I literally somebody was talking to me and they was talking about going to the movies to see that movie. And I said, one, it's on HBO Max. And they was like, well, I like going to the movies. And I was like, don't pay to see that movie. 
That was my exact response. I was like, don't don't go back to that movie. If you can watch it on HBO Max, just do that. So, yeah. Okay. What do you, what about you? First and foremost, I want to start off by saying that Gal Gadot is a gorgeous woman. She is. Um, that is. probably was like the only thing outside of the longing for actual action that was noteworthy that kept me intrigued. Um, She's bad. The movie is a sleeper, and I do mean that literally. I I turned it on, and after maybe 20 minutes, I literally fell asleep. I had to start it over. I watched the rest of it. It was hard to stay awake, um, and I wound up going to sleep to it later on that night. So that's number one before I get into it in depth. Let's start with scene. Let's start with the first scene. The the um Gal Gadot's character Diana is or slash Wonder Woman is a little girl back um you know when you know when she was with the Amazons. Mm-hmm. Number one, I said this movie is already starting off on the wrong foot. Why? Because her mother is watching her compete with other Amazons um, as they have trained and are training to fight. In the first Wonder Woman, and I went back to make sure, in the first Wonder Woman, she was not on board with her being an Amazon warrior of any kind until she was an adolescent. This girl was no older than eight years old. Mm Mm-hmm. So already you are off the beaten path of what you started with. It doesn't make sense with the timeline. So that's number one. I said, okay, they just trying to do something else. The the last movie came out in 2017. I think they want us to just forget. And no, I'm not going to forget, especially since we got movies at our fingertips. I'm going to go back and watch and see. And I know that she wasn't down with it. She's not down with it. Um, the whole idea of Chris Pine's character just magically appearing into someone else's body didn't make sense to me. If it, you know what I mean, I guess they were trying to make it seem as natural as possible, but that was super eerie and you didn't explain it. Um, Kristen Wiig coming in, I thought Kristen Wiig was probably um, a really good character for the first part of who she was. Right. But the latter part of who she becomes doesn't really translate very well for me. Um, She becomes Cheetah almost out of nowhere. I would have loved to see I would I would have loved to see a transformation happen of some sort. I would love to see her actually um, leading up to becoming that person. You know, Um, there needed to be a better um um, you know, we get a glimpse of why Max Lord is the way that he is. Apparently he had an abusive father. Um, s- sidebar, you're probably going to hate me for this. This is super politically incorrect. But there is a part where he flashes back and his father's being super abusive. And his father's yelling at him because he's about nine years old, it looks like. And he went to bed. Man, the... <laughs> The stain that was on that <laughs> bitch. <laughs> it was a huge yellow stain it in was. that bed. It was. I'll probably be bad too, though. That's man. what I'm saying. I was like, this one might be a little warranted, Max. I don't know. I don't know if you want this in the flashback. I'll, you was I'll, a little too old to be. You know, what I mean, this was like a puddle. This was like this was this was like a, a you know, it was like a you was this was seemed intentional, bro. You know, you trying to get your dad back, I guess. But um, <laughs> but that's a little side note. Um, what else? Uh, the action scenes they weren't enough to keep me engaged. Um, that's number one for me. Um, like I said, Chris Pine just appearing in another man's body didn't make sense. Um, uh. Kristen Wiig, I thought she was perfectly cast for the first part, but not so much the latter part. Um, um, him wanting to become, him wanting to become the the wish stone was a little too Jafarish for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I wasn't really feeling that too much. Um, 
It was. Like, it, I'll be honest though. The message was really great. The message was great. It it was. And me, you know, me being a believer, um, it's really easy for me to go back to scripture and to go back and relate into, um, you know, God in the way of the world and Christology and things of that nature. Just, you know, like just having a Christian worldview, just to share the fact if everybody got what they wanted. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? If everybody got what they wanted, this wouldn't really be that great of a Mm-mm. of a world. Not to say that the world is great right now, but people wonder why certain things don't go the way that they want them to. It's like, fam, you getting your wish impedes upon somebody else's wish and so on and so forth. And thank God that we got a God that knows how to orchestrate things and allow certain things to happen. Um, but that's, that was a side note for me. I thought that was a really cool thing. Um, and she had, she had a little aside as she was doing what she was doing. I won't give that away. I thought that was really cool. Um, I love the fact that they said it in 1984. Um, mm-hmm. I love the fact that, uh, and I'm pretty sure like that's when the Wonder Woman series came back around maybe. I got to look into it. I, I got to look know. into it too. I know. It, I feel like it has some sort of significance, but. Right. But if that's the case, I thought that was dope. I love period pieces like that. Like Me take too. you back to a time and have the people dress in the way that they, and you know, malls were super big at that time. So for it to be set in a mall and for the mall to look very 1980s ish, I thought was really dope. Um, the women empowerment piece in in these films is really strong and I think that is super important. Um there being a little black girl in the in the beginning of the film I thought was dope. Other I did hate this though. There was no other black character in the film other than the homeless dude. I wasn't feeling that at all. Mm. Wasn't feeling that at all. Um I also didn't like oh, I'm sorry. Mm-mm. It seemed like how a lot of the guys not just there was like Chris who was like cool and then every other guy seemed like a I, like a D bag. I was just like, do all guys jerks like in this era? Well, I'm I'm not I'm not saying guys have changed that much. But my <laughs> point my point was like I was like, come on, man. Like Chris was cool. I mean Steve. Steve, that was his character name. But uh mm. Steve was cool, but everybody else seemed like 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 when she was like when one of them was um when Kristen Wiggs, Cheetah was walking down the street and all those guys were like hitting on her and being a jerk and all that stuff when she was I'll running. be honest, Kristen Wiggs looked very pretty, looked very nice. She did. She in did. that black dress. I was <laughs> this is that's why I was saying I'm like you can you can see well for me, some things are just going to be super predictable. Like I like I always say because we've seen millions of movies by this time, but the key is to do it well. And to do the expected in an unexpected way. Unexpected way. way. Um, so it's even wild. with the wraparound scene that we were talking about, I said that's um, that's Steve, and at at some point it's going to wrap around and it's going to show his face instead of the other guy's face. But they did it. It needed to be done. Makes perfect sense. It I'm was a very. A di- it was a very. Oh, you're talking part. about a different scene. Well, it's that near, scene, I'm like, they, yeah, it. For me, it was a very cheap way of doing it. It was cheap, but still at this cheap in the sense of cost, but not cheap in the sense of um, of of uh, storytelling productivity. Mm-hmm. I'll say. Oh yeah, I was talking about the one near the end, but I wasn't trying to give it away. Okay. You know what I mean? When uh, uh-huh. he's like, he says, "You know what you have to do," and then the camera wraps around. And then at one point, one point she learns how to fly for no reason. Like, yeah. like oh, yeah. you learning how to fly was never an issue. And now all of a sudden, like, you feel like you've always wanted to learn how to fly or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, yeah. But yeah. At oh, this but- point, at this point, you're just Superman or Supergirl with the lasso. Yeah. And I, I to piggyback off of what you said, um, that really did annoy me about the cheetah, too, because I liked her. Like you said, I liked her the first half of the movie. And then it was like they they did they kind of gave like a throwaway example in the mm-hmm. end where it was like oh you're bad because of this but it wasn't enough for me because I was like because as I was watching the movie I I literally kept thinking like I miss I was like in this two and a half hour movie I've been missing stuff because it seemed like people are just going 
full people, ate crazy for yeah, no reason. For no reason. <laughs> uh, for no reason. And, and, and in 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 a two and a half hour movie, you had the time to be able to flesh out who was who and why they were who they were. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean You had the time So don't give me that You only had an hour and a half You didn't You gave us two and a half hours of fluff mm-hmm. Two and a half hours of fluff I don't understand it And the thing So that with that said I I give it a strong two mm-hmm. I, I, fig- I felt that was coming Because there's so m- don't you like you're not a small studio you got the whole dc universe behind you and for all intents and purposes outside of the batman series this is the best that dc has to offer right now you had a lot hinging on this there was a lot of um there was a lot um hanging on this and with with all of that in play no i think it's it's a fail but it was number 1 in the box office um, it was like the highest, um, highest um, box office selling film since the um, pandemic has started. Seventeen million dollars, um, which ain't nothing. You know what I mean? But like, it's not. You know, but, but but no. But that's you know, COVID and everything. No one's going to this to the um, theaters. No yeah, one and should. Then, and then even if you are, I think they're only doing like the theaters here in Atlanta are only doing like thirty percent. Um, Capacity. Yeah, because you got to do like the spaces between the seats and stuff, and so. Right. So yeah, no, definitely that, is a two. And then for people who again, I, I keep stressing this, it was on HBO Max. So for people to actually still go to the theaters and pay to see it, I know not everybody have HBO Max, but I would have been quick to been like, hey, I know somebody got it, you know, right. <laughs> and logged in and watched it, right. not to not to hurt your pockets, Warner Brothers. But uh, <laughs> but uh, that's what I so I watched it on H. But yeah, I gave it a two point five. Keep you give it a two. Yeah. I feel like that's fair, uh, especially like I said, since I like the first one so much. Like I was, I was, yeah. Like I, I'm gonna watch it again because I know you said you watched it a couple. I times. love going to sleep to it. It's great. It's great to fall asleep to. <laughs> uh, there's a Marvel movie that I, that's good for me to fall asleep to, but I'm not gonna mention it because people gonna think we're like out the what to- Marvel movie. Captain Marvel. I, I fell asleep on Captain Marvel in theaters. Oh, no one's going to be mad at you for that. Oh, okay. I didn't want people to think, well, yo, you're just not liking the women movies. And I'm like, that's not <laughs> that's not what it is. I don't <laughs> That I might like, be what it is, T. No, I like I love Jessica Jones, the show. But that movie, yeah, I remember, redeem yourself. Yeah, I had to. Supergirl? It's all right. But <laughs> it's okay. But yeah, I fell I fell asleep on Captain Marvel. But again, uh, if I was in theaters watching this one, like I was at home, and I think the fact that my family was around doing other stuff is what was keeping me up. But yeah, I, I really feel like I missed a bunch of stuff, and and then I realized I didn't. I was like, oh, this is the movie. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there Sorry. it is. There it is. Um, but what did you guys think? Hit us up, um, Keith. Are we doing the mailing for this as well? Or is that just for thank God for the group chat where people the can what? mail in? When people can mail in and ask us stuff. Sure, if you want. Um, don't don't just text us or I mean you can put it in the comments, but you can also send us a letter if you like we taking it old school speaking of nineteen eighty four. You can hit us up at P.O. Box three oh two and Woodbridge, New Jersey, 07095. That's P.O. Box 302 in Woodbridge, New Jersey, 07095. Mm-hmm. Let us know what you guys think. Let us know if you got any requests for any movies that you want us to watch. But uh, that Wonder Woman 1984, 2.5 and a 2. Uh, this has been T, and this is Keith, and we out. Peace. Peace.